Hi, I'm Kona Cat, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and play Pipe Mutts. It is a sweet little songbird game for two to four players. It came out a few years ago and it slid under the radar for me. Um, I didn't know this game existed <laughs> until Board Game Arena recently released a beta version um, to play digitally. Uh, I love this game and so I had to buy it and I love it in person too. So you get to see how to set up and play today and let's check it out. Setup is pretty straightforward. These are all the cards that you get in the game um, this is our starting player card here um, these are all the birds there's six little sweet songbirds that we're going to be playing with for our bird deck and all the backs look like this for these for these uh, cards here um, we have our feeder card um, you'll notice on this side there's a four that's for four players this side has a two to three for two to three players. So depending how many players you are playing with, you will use that side. Um, and this is our seed deck here. Um, if you notice there's eggs on all the seed, eggs are our point system in the game. Um, the back looks like this. There are some bad cards in the deck, which are the squirrel and the crow here. Um, I consider squirrels and crows amazing, but for this game, they are kind of a nuisance <laughs> and they take stuff from you. So that is our seed deck. So let me show you how to set up for a three to four player game. The only difference with three to four player is the feeder card itself. So if you're playing three players, you would use this side. If you're playing four, you would use this side. We are gonna place that in the middle for everyone to use. We're gonna shuffle up all the seed cards um, and then deal out four above our feeder here. So we have one, two, three, and four if you were to pull one of the squirrel or crow cards while you are setting up you would remove it replace it with a seed card and and shuffle it back into the deck and then we're going to put the rest of the seed deck up above here kind of scooch this down give us some more room for the birds themselves we are going to use all of the colors we are going to shuffle them all up <laughs> which is not going to be a grand shuffle for this video. <laughs> um, so you're going to shuffle them all up. You are going to deal um, four cards to each player. So each player gets four cards or four cards for them to play off of. And then we're going to create a draw deck with the birds. We're going to use whatever's left. We're going to draw three cards to put uh, out for availability and starting player is the last person to see a songbird that is almost always me <laughs> so i'm sorry if you play with me <laughs> i'm always starting player <laughs> um, but that will go to whoever seen the last larry sent songbird that's gonna go to me and we are ready to play with three to four players the two player setup is slightly different. We are going to use this uh, feeder here for the two to three players. We are still going to use the seed cards, but we are going to remove the four cards that have this three plus up at the top. So there are four cards that have that three plus. We're gonna remove those from the game completely. We are still going to deal four cards above the feeder here and put the remainder up top here. Move this down. And then with the two player game, you are gonna remove one type of bird. Uh, so let's get rid of our sparrow here. I mean, he's adorable. I don't wanna get rid of him, but we gotta get rid of one of them. We're gonna remove one uh, completely from the game. And then we are going to shuffle these guys. And we know that I'm not gonna shuffle very well <laughs> for this video, but we'll, we'll pretend I know how to shuffle well. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we shuffle those up. We are going to deal four cards to each player still. We are going to add one card to each feeder spot on the feeder here itself. And again, this is two players. So you're gonna add these here. Um, you are still going to, we have our two players here. And then you are still going to make our draw deck with uh, three cards face up. And our starting player is still the person who saw a songbird most recently, which is still me. <laughs> and then we are ready to play a two-player game. 
The overall gameplay is pretty straightforward. You are going to be playing bird cards from your hand out here along the feeder line so you can get bird cards to put into your collection. Those will score if you have the highest number of birds in that color category. You will be gathering seeds that will score you points as well. And if you gather pairs of numbers, um, each color uh, has two of each number, a male and a female, uh, that will get you points as well. So let me get us started here and get into more details on how to play. First off, uh, let me show you the anatomy of the cards here. Uh, this is a bird card. We have the numbers up at the top, the color. Um, each bird card has eggs um, represented underneath each bird here. Um, those will be scoring at the end of the game if you have the most cards of that color uh, amongst your other players. Um, then you will score if you have if you do not have the most cards, you won't score for that color. And the other thing to note is that there are two of each number and color. Um, there's a male and a female here. If you have a pair of those in your collection, you will get five points at the end of the game, regardless of whether you have the most of that color or not. And then of course the seed cards here, as I showed before, these are also scoring you points at the end of the game from what you have left. On your turn, the player order starts, of course, with the first player, um, and they will take their turn, and then counterclockwise, each player will take their turn as well until the game end is triggered. And to get us started, uh, for the three to four player game, you will not have birds out here. Again, this is the four player side, this is the two to three player side. Um, so if you're playing with three players, you would not have any starter birds out here. If you are playing with two players, you would have two birds out here already. So let's just start off with uh, a couple cards out here already so that I can go through the actions during your turn and we'll get these right set up. <laughs> so we'll go through the phases that happen during your turn. The first phase of your turn, you will be playing a card um, out here along the feeder line here. So these two birds, the birds that are closest to the feeder are considered the perch birds here. Um, so they are feasting away on the bird seed here. And when you play a card from your hand, you are gonna play it to the right or the left of either side here. You get to choose and you will offset it a little bit because these cards are considered the ground bird cards um, that are waiting in line for the feeder <laughs> while this guy is munching away. Let's go ahead and play this four uh, next to the one here. We're gonna offset it since it's our ground bird. Now, when we play this card, um, we are going to add all of the numbers of the ground bird cards. Um, in this case, there's only one. So the sum of all of the ground bird cards is four that number is higher than the one. And if the number is higher than the perch bird here, then we will get a seed card and we will get, be able to capture this card into our collection. So determining which seed card is the difference between the two. So this is a four, this is a one, the difference is three. You would get the third spot from here, and that is the seed card that goes into your collection here. If the difference um, was one, you would get the first spot, two, three, and four. And if you had a difference of five or higher, you draw straight from the deck. Now, when you grab this seed card, you will move this down one spot here. You will not refill this till the end of your turn. Um, then you will add this bird into your collection. We'll just set our little collection up here. And then we move the highest number ground bird card over to the birch spot. So uh, this is the only card here and he's a four. So he's gonna go right there. And then we are going to draw our cards up to four in our hand limit. So we need to draw one. We can pick one from uh, that is face up here or we can take one from the deck. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and take this four and we will refresh it immediately. And then after that, then we fill up this deck here. Now. Um, when we fill this spot here, if you draw a squirrel or a crow card, they are going to start piling up next to the seed cards here. So I draw a squirrel. We move, put this squirrel card to the bottom most seed card available. Um, let's draw another one. We have a crow. <laughs> um, the crow will then go to the next one here. And when you get this seed card, you will also get the squirrel card and have to resolve it. Um, the squirrels take two of your seed cards that you have collected. The crow takes one of your birds from the highest colored birds you have the most of. So uh, if right now I would only have this one, um, I would lose this one. <laughs> so uh, these will pile up here on the side. When, if you get past four, say you fill all of these spots, um, 
any crow or squirrel card you draw after that and there is no room, they are discarded from the game. So we're gonna add this here. And then we go on to the next person's turn. Now let's go ahead and play a turn where we are playing a number that is equal to or lower than the perch card. So let's play this four. Uh, we're gonna play the four next to the six here. Since the ground bird total is four and it is definitely lower than the six, we do not get a seed card from out here. We do not claim this card, but what we are able to do is play a card directly from our hand to our collection if the number is equal to or lower than the card we played. So uh, I could play this blue four or I could play this yellow four into my collection out here and then I would draw two cards. So I have four in my hand at the end of my turn. So we can take one from here flip this over and then we could also take one from the pile here and that would be the end of our turn. Let's go ahead and play a couple more rounds here just so you can see uh, the playthrough a little bit better and see how the additional ground birds adds up and maybe if we get the squirrel card here just so you can understand. Um, so let's go ahead we'll play this three for an example. We'll play the three next to this four over here. Um, we are going to add these two cards so we have a four and a three um, that's seven. That seven is one higher than the six. So we will get this spot here. We will also claim the squirrel. So we will get this seed card. We get the squirrel, which we will resolve in a moment. We move all of these down one spot. We then claim our perch bird here for our collection. That's going to go here. Then we resolve our squirrel. So we lose our two seed cards that we have collected so terrible move on my part <laughs> but good for an example um so we are going to discard all of those from the game and then over here we are going to pick the highest number bird to move to the bird the to move to the perch position here um we have a four and a three the four is the highest so we're going to move that to this position here the three is still a ground bird here um we would draw back up to our four limit here let's grab this six and then we would refresh the seed pile here like so. I'm gonna show you an example on how you might be able to capture more than one bird card into your collection over here. Um, right now we have a five as our perch bird. We have ground birds totaling five, so nothing was taken here. Um, so on our turn, we are going to play this two here. We would play that here. Uh, we would add these up. We have five, six, seven. Um, since we have seven versus the five, uh, we would be able to get this card and our seed card would be the second spot up. So we would get this seed card here that goes into our seed pile over here. Uh, these get moved down. And then we get this card into our collection. Uh, we add that over here. Uh, then we check to see which is the highest card. That is this three. We move the three to the perch spot. Uh, these are the ground birds. These add up to four. Uh, so four is higher than the three by one. We would get this seed card into our stash. We get the crow card, which we'll resolve in a moment. Uh, these get moved down by two. We do not refresh till the end of the turn. Then we get our card here into our collection. Uh, we add that out here. Then we resolve this little guy. Um, we lose a card from our highest number uh, bird deck here. So uh, this would be the pink ones and we get to choose which card we lose. So I'm going to choose the one here. So these get discarded from the game. We then move uh, the two into the perch spot here. I tend to go by the rule of whatever bird card is closest if they are equal. So this one would go here. This one's your ground bird. We then get our cards drawn up to four. We take a card here. We replenish this spot. We then replenish the seed deck starting for, oh, we got a crow <laughs> uh, from the bottom up. And that would be the end of our turn. We will continue to play uh, these rounds exactly like this until the seed deck uh, reaches its end. And I will show you how that's gonna work. So let's say all of these cards have been used in play um, during our turn. Um, we gather this seed card here have to refresh. We move this guy down and we don't have a card to place that triggers the end game. When there's no more cards to place into a spot, uh, the end is triggered and the play continues until everybody has taken an equal turn. So if this happens for the last player, then the game immediately ends. If there are still a couple people who have turns to take uh, before we reach the last player, then they would continue their turns. 
And once everybody has taken their turns, um, everybody at the same time is going to take two cards from their hand to discard and two cards to add to their collection. So be strategic about that. <laughs> You're gonna keep track of what everybody's collecting so you can make sure you score the best. I would probably go for blue here since I have some higher number blues. I would discard these two and then place these into my collection. And then we do end game scoring. For the end game scoring, you are going to start by counting all your pairs that you have collected of each color um, and score those. So this player has two uh, sixes here. They have two ones for the blues here. Um, this player has uh, two ones here. And that looks like the only pair that, oh, and this pair here, they have two twos here. Um, those players will score five points for each of those pairs that they have in their collection and then we will score the majority species so uh this player is the only one with the gray cards here um this player has uh one two three four five blues this player has two they will not score those um this player has one pink this player has three so they will not score their pinks uh yellow versus yellow this player has the least amount they will not score those they will score theirs and so you will count up um all the eggs on the cards that you have in the species color that you were able to win the majority of and you'll count all those eggs up you'll add those to your pair points and then you will also add all your seed card points here and whoever has the most points wins if there is a tie between these numbers here the person with the most bird pairs would win That's how you set up and play pike mods and i will see you next time for the next game bye